Ann, I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you. If you don't mind taking a few seconds and just introduce yourself and your relationship with Ablacare. Sure. My name is Anne Osdois. I'm a partner at MG Start, and I'm the CEO of Ablacare, which is uh, the last company created by MG Start and seed funded by, uh, by MG Start as well. And tell me about the story behind Ablacare. At MG Start, we knew the Ablacare inventors uh, for a few years. We were big fans of what they had. We thought it had a huge potential uh, for disrupting the way uh, female infertility is treated. Uh, but they were on a journey where they were going to develop the company themselves. Uh, when that didn't happen for a multiple of re you know, different reasons, we, uh, we decided we would reach out again and you know, provide help, support, funding, and you know, take over that project to bring it to patients. We take a few seconds and tell us what Ablacare does. Yes, so Ablacare is a minimally invasive, one-time treatment for polycystic ovarian syndrome infertility. Uh, which is a disease that causes uh, women to uh, stop ovulating or have difficulties ovulating. And what we're doing with Ablacare is through a procedure that is guided by ultrasound, uh, transvaginally, we're delivering uh, ablations to the ovaries in order to induce ovulation again. Is there any potential impact on patients that you'd like to share with the audience? Ablacare is a project that we really liked from the beginning because we were leveraging clinical knowledge on a surgical predicate which had been done for decades, but turning this into a minimally invasive procedure which would then be applicable to many, many more patients and make it into the routine uh, of, uh, of care. So what we are really excited about is you know, the magnitude of the potential impact it can have for patients and hopefully we'll have a lot of pregnancies derived from, uh, from our treatment. Perfect. So looking ahead, Anne, what are your priorities in 2018? In 2018, we're going to do everything to get ready for First in Human, which is planned early next year. Uh, so that includes, of course, finalizing the prototype design, getting full preclinical validation, and then working on the regulatory approvals to get um, authorization to start First in, first in Human. Well, best of luck. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Thank you. Well, I love your technology, I respect what you do, and I appreciate everything you're doing for improved patient care and quality of life. Thank you for being here today, Anne, Thank and good you. luck. Thank you. Thank you. Marion, I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you for having me. Will you take just a few seconds and introduce yourself and let us know your role at Ablacare? Yeah, so I'm Mahim Gaspermont. I'm the COO of Ablacare. Uh, today, I look after a number of things, but the main focus of my activity is to achieve all the milestones that we need to get from the concept stage to the first in human, so to bring our technology for the first time into the clinic. Well, welcome. Let's start with the journey from diagnosis to a patient having your technology implemented. Uh, today, when a patient is diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome, they're usually either in adolescence or later in life when they're trying to create a family. These patients will seek help in terms of fertility and will usually be prescribed a first light treatment, which is a drug that they have to take uh, for a number of months. And about 40% of these women will fail to ovulate and conceive using this method. These women would then be eligible for the Ablacare procedure and as it's a procedure that can be performed by any fertility clinician, they would still be in the same management pathway as the one where they are in today with their current clinicians. What would you say the advantage is to have your clinician have the same journey with you or having the same clinician for the transition? What's the advantage of that? In terms of follow-up, um, it's a lot easier and uh, any fertility treatment is quite demanding uh, for, you know, for the couples and for the patient especially. So being able to you know, have that long-term follow-up with the same clinician uh, is really important. And then on the clinician side, when you are managing a patient and are having to refer that patient to another doctor, it's something that can be an issue. So um, with, with our technology, they can keep the, the same management pathway. I'm sure they appreciate that to stay with their trusted clinician and their trusted advisor. Tell me about the last milestone that Ablacare achieved. Over the past few months, we've been working on going from the prototype stage to a device which we can use for our first in vivo clinical trials. 
So this is something that just began on a bovine model uh, where we are really trying to test if the procedure itself is feasible. So we're looking at a number of things. The first thing we're looking at is the access, which is a transvaginal access. And then we're also just looking at the feasibility of the procedure itself. So can we perform the treatment that we're looking to perform in a time frame which is reasonable um, and in a safe and effective manner um, for all the surrounding tissues and for, for the subject itself. So we just begun the preclinical trials uh, a little over a month ago and uh, we've had some really exciting first results. Wow, well, good luck for the rest of it. I can't wait Thanks. to see how it turns out. What milestone achieved would make you feel like you finally made it? Uh, so there are a number of important things that we'd like to achieve in the next few months with Ablacare. Um, but what's really key is as we do not really have a clinical risk because we're based on a surgical predicate that's been researched and used for over 30 years, um, our key focus is to really get to the first patient. So when we will have that first clinical data, um, this will be an extremely exciting step for Ablacare and we will have been able to validate the technological feasibility but also the procedure feasibility itself. How long do you think that might take? Our first clinical trial is planned for early 2019, and so that will just be in a, in a couple of months. Things are getting exciting. Yeah. So congratulations for being a MedTech Innovator finalist. Thank you. What are you looking for specifically in a strategic partner? What's really incredible about the MedTech Innovator program is that it really brings together energy and people in one environment uh, so that you can develop uh, paradigm shifting technology and make it available to patients. So what we're really looking forward to and what we're looking for in this partnership um, is to have this strategic input on various steps uh, and various developments of Ablocare, but also getting this exposure that MedTech Innovator will bring us. OBGYN is a space which hasn't seen a lot of innovation recently, um, and so having a platform for us to share what we're doing uh, and show it to the world would be really fantastic in any geography. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you.